Chapter 11, Castle Rock, the penultimate chapter of the novel. We've seen a couple of chapters ago the death of Simon. Ultimately, this chapter builds to the death of Piggy. We have that real struggle happening between the two groups. We see the ultimate failure of democracy as the sound of the conch is ultimately ignored. And, you know, we have that central, totemic, iconic moment of the novel where Piggy's death represents that final fall of science, the final fall of logic, the final fall of reason in the novel as the entire island finally, fully and totally falls into savagery. We've got to then ask within this three key questions. What has happened to the rule of law in this chapter and how is this significant? Why is Piggy killed thematically and what could this signify? And then finally, as Ralph is totally isolated, what does this suggest about the nature of democracy and the nature of power? These three key questions, are, you know, we've asked them in different ways as we've moved through each and every chapter and they really are starting to reach ahead by the time we reach chapter 11 in Castle Rock. Okay, we have three key quotations here, all taken from a very similar section of the novel in this case, a very similar section of the chapter because it's particularly dense and rich with uh, symbolism that we need to know and that we need to look at. Undoubtedly, you could explore more widely than this and add in other quotations and other themes if you were to create a resource that looks very much like this. So we'll start off with the conch exploded into a thousand white fragments and ceased to exist. Then the description of Piggy as his head opened and stuff came out and turned red, followed by Jack's exclamation, is that what you get? I meant that, that total lack of guilt very much unlike the reaction that we saw in the previous chapter, particularly from Ralph. Um, so let's just take this symbol first, the conch exploding. Again, as we know, it's a symbol. It's a symbol that runs all the way through the novel. But this is the end of this symbol. Okay, this is the final moment of the conch. The fact that it explodes is heightened and hyperbolic language. There's that sense of total destruction, which therefore means it's that destruction of democratic values and their total loss. I also think it's important that we have the word fragments in there as well. Um, it's as though it can't be pieced back together again. And again, in combination with the, with the verb explodes, it's as though they've been scattered and lost all of those separate pieces, all of those, all those, all of those elements all thrown around and together. Um, we add in here the fact that it ceased to exist is really useful and key. You know, so it is the final confirmation because we've seen it coming for a long time that civility and decency have been removed from the island. And we've, as I said, we've known this. Um, has been coming for a long time. We've seen it coming for ages, but this is that confirmation, that's golding, confirming that those values have been lost totally. Now that happens almost simultaneously with this moment here. And that's worth noting. So these things I want you to imagine as simultaneous moments. Um, and we can add in and throw in here the same sort of approach to violence. Again, the language uh, refuses to describe in detail the outcomes of violence. This is being avoided. It's as though language cannot adequately convey the horror of this spectacle but actually in many in many respects um, it just makes this worse so it leaves us to imagine the horror of piggy's head being split open it's because he is the rational character it's as though his brain is the thing spilling out And again, you know, we've known Piggy is the rational figure in the novel all the time. He's the one who is logical. He's the one who refused to acknowledge that there could even be a beast on the island. 
um, because there wasn't the right livestock on that island to support something so massive, something so huge. And again, this is that loss of rationality. And it's almost as though now the whole narrative has been given over to savagery and impulsive violence. And again, here we have Jack screaming and shouting out because it's ultimately Roger who releases the rock and the boulder. But it's Jack who screams out, that's what you'll get. I meant that. So there is no remorse. There is no guilt. There is only the sadistic enjoyment of murder and death. And like many dictators... And many authoritarian regimes, he believes these actions are justified, that they are the only and correct response to being challenged. You know, Ralph talks about just wanting to go back up and get Piggy's stuff back, Piggy's glasses back. You know, one of the reasons for going up there is so that Piggy can see. But again, authoritarian regimes respond um, to reasonable actions, reasonable requests with acts of violence in this way, as though they are justified, as though as though they are OK and they can just do what they want. Um, and there is definitely that sense of enjoyment of this moment as well, with that lack of remorse being shown. So again, tracing and tracking these through, you know, you could talk about this theme being one of um, violence. You can talk about savagery versus civility in here. You know, any number of themes you could really talk and track through here. And you know, as with previous videos, I focused on quotations from within a single chapter, but you could go on and look at chapters and look at other chapters in the novel and track and trace these through. Again, with a model like this, with a single central quotation, you can then follow off with multiple different themes, multiple different quotations from both this chapter and the novel as a whole. So in this section, before Piggy dies, there's some interesting commentaries about democracy. We see him uh, cry out uh, and use the conch to call out, um, but it's the savages who appear, carrying spears and defending the entrance. Ralph carrying on blowing, you know, so here we have the attempt to reclaim democracy. Through the symbols at the start of the novel course ultimately this fails and it's important to note that at that stage as well um, the boys being described as savages again we have that loss of civility but also the loss of innocence they are not being described as children but in subhuman terms. And again, that takes us back to the primal instinctive responses and actions. And again, there's a key issue here whereby with this, the loss of civility, the loss of innocence, it means that any attempts to go back to the democratic values from the start of the novel ultimately are just going to fail and are going to inevitably fail as well. So as we carry on through this passage, um, he talks about, again, calling an assembly in the same way that I've mentioned up here. You know, these are no longer boys um, from British public schools. These are savages. So there is no real scope to do this. What's interesting, however, is that they do pause. They do mutter in response to this. But at this particular moment, um, is that uh, there is no Jack at this moment. Okay. 
that authoritarian dictatorial presence isn't there. And that's what they're really asking down here, as I've just indicated. So, the boys on Castle Rock don't move in response to the request for an assembly. They wait for their leader. Again, this is autocracy. One leader, no opposing voices. And that leaves the population incapable of responding. Incapable of independent thought as well. So that happens, uh, and as that happens in, in a society, this just leads to tyranny. Because ultimately, what humanity has shown over time and over the decades again and again is that actually when all power rests with a single person, it ultimately is abused and taken advantage of as well. So a couple of really interesting pieces of commentary um, for this little section down here. And again, these are things that are often less frequently commented on as well. OK, I thought we should look at the passage also where Piggy's killed. We've taken a couple of short sections from it, but here we have some interesting linguistic shifts. First of all, the description of the boys on Castle Rock being acting like a crowd of kids. Again, the language of um, you know savagery just seems to have paused here just for a minute. Um, and there is that kind of hope for an innocent rather than savage response. Um, and again, this is something that's quite interesting. Um, when we think about the context, and I entirely credit uh, other teachers and other teachers' videos for this piece of context, there was a philosopher called Thomas Hobbes who argued that uh, mankind needs, um, needs kings, needs kings, needs a monarchy in order to protect and be a guardian, be a steward um, who looks after and cares for populations. And without the care of the steward, without the care of a king, without the care of someone to look after the people and the populace, that mankind inherently descends back into savagery. Um, whereas here, um, the group being described like a crowd of kids, there is a contrasting philosophical um, comment here. There is a belief instead, you know, children, children being innocent. And this is the um, contrast to this is that uh, a philosopher, French philosopher called Jean-Jacques Rousseau, um, instead believes that humans are innately good, inherently good, inherently pure, and it's only through exposure to the world around them that humans become corrupted. By referring to them as kids, that's a more Rousseauian language, um, whereby there's a belief that those children are inherently good, despite all of the things that have happened. And really the narrative, and the narrative Golden gives us, is a Hobbesian view, or the view of Thomas Hobbes that Mankind, unfortunately, defaults to savagery, de 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 defaults to violence uh, without the care of um, a steward, someone to look after the people. So there is that interesting linguistic tension that Golding's playing with here. Um, but equally interesting is the descriptions that surround Piggy. You know, he's described here as a bag of fat, again, reduced down um, and, having his, and he has his humanity here stripped away from him. As we move through this section, um, we have uh, Piggy shouting, um, you know, we have their Piggy shouting out, what's better to have rules and agree or to hunt and kill? Civility and order and democracy versus savagery and primal instinctive violence. And again, Ralph backing that up, law and rescue or hunting and breaking things up. So again, you know, in really blunt terms, we've got the binary opposition between civility and savagery being explicitly stated here. And ultimately, well, what wins? Well, only one thing, unfortunately, for Piggy, because as Roger releases the rock from the top of the cliff, um, 
the conch explodes as it's dropped and it smashes into all of those pieces. Um, he's knocked off the cliff, falls 40 feet, and his head opened up and stuff came out and turned red. So again, it's out of Piggy's head where all of this comes. Um, and again, you know, it's not describing the brains being splattered across the rocks. It's just his head's opened up and stuff came out. It's as though, from the boy's perspective, they're unable to comprehend the level of violence that they have enacted on Piggy there. Um, and again, we have that movement from Piggy being this bag of fat up here. And again, reduced then to an object. Head opened, stuff came out. Described as a simile, like a pig's after it's been killed. And again, his humanity is being stripped away here. So again, in the face of violence, in the face of authoritarian and tyrannical rule, Piggy is reduced to being an object animal and that's not unlike the rest of the boys you know the rest of the boys are described in animalistic terms and through an animalistic semantic field and piggy's normally not part of that so again in in being on the receiving end of the violence he's then um is then he then becomes like the other boys completely taken over by violence and there is a really um kind of melancholy piece of uh, semantic field uh, sorry pathetic fallacy here the sigh breathed again in a long slow sigh it's you know to me this is the the this is a moment where the natural world is almost exhausted exhausted by the violence of the boys exhausted by the violence of their acts and actions and that's then contrasted immediately to the, uh, the metaphor of the water boiling white. So yes, exhaust, yes, breathing again. It's as though tension is being released with the death of Piggy. It's as though we've built up to this. He's boiling white, like that rage and fury there. Um, and very much in the same way that Simon's body is taken out and away by the sea. And the body of Piggy is also taken out and away. Language in this novel, Golding deliberately gives us semantic fields and language that avoids describing the outcomes of violence. The bodies are not left, the evidence is not there, so the boys are never forced to face um, the face face death and face the outcome of their actions as well. Questions. Firstly, what has happened with the rule of law? How is this significant? Well, there's no to two ways about this. The rule of law now has completely broken down and all authority sits with Jack on the island. The boys on Castle Rock refuse to move, refuse to join Jack, uh, re refuse to join Ralph in an assembly when Ralph blew the conch and demanded it. There is only one law, there is only Jack's law, and we know that he intends and moves always towards violence, always towards acts of brutality, and even enjoying those acts of brutality. So the rule of law, well, you can argue it's broken down equally. In an authoritarian, tyrannical, undemocratic re regime, the rule of law sits in the hands of a single person. And the responses of that, that world are determined by that single person when you're in an authoritarian state. And again, why is Piggy killed and what could this signify? Well, it's a natural um, escalation. You lose um, democracy you lose plurality, multiple voices in society, and you then take away voices that challenge. And again, normally, scientific voices, if they don't fit in with what the regime wants, what a regime wants, those are the voices in society that are often stripped away. Piggy's death is that death of logic in the novel, of scientific reason and rationality in the novel. And ultimately, by the time we get to the next chapter, you know, Piggy is described as that true friend. Now, as Ralph realises and Ralph and as Ralph wept at the end of the novel. Um, so again, Piggy's death, that loss of scientific rationality and reason. And also the that again, instead of there being multiple voices and individuals working cohesively together, everything instead rests with Jack. All the authority on the island rests with Jack. There's no debate, there's no assembly. The conch 
shattering at the same time as Piggy's brain um, splatters onto the rocks underneath and his, his skull is cracked open by the rock that Roger throws down. Um, you know, again, we have all of that there all happening simultaneously. So it's Piggy's death fractures the presence of rationality and science on the island, but also the conch exploding into those fragments again highlights exactly the same issue. Piggy's death, democracy's death happens simultaneously on the island. And ultimately what you have by the end of this chapter is Ralph ultimately isolated. But what does this mean? Well, in the face of authoritarianism, as we said in the previous video, democracy is fragile. Democracy can be taken away. It has to be protected. It has to be looked after. We have, you know, we have that verb caressing um, to describe how um, Ralph is holding it. We have the way that it's handed between people. And even earlier in the novel that it in, is that it's snatched so that democracy and the power and authority that comes with it can be moved around almost arbitrarily. But by this stage of the novel, as we've said, and I've said this a number of times now in this in this video to really stress this point, democracy has been eroded, destroyed. Every single facet and element of democracy on the island, the assemblies, the boys walk, working together, voting together, that's all been stripped away. Now authority only sits with Jack on the island, and that is a representation of authoritarian regimes where there is only one way of thinking. There is only one approach. There is only one person with that power and authority left on the island. And that takes us to the end of this penultimate chapter before we move into uh, chapter 12 and the final video in this series on Lord of the Flies.